sometimes it's not good to talk about doing this work in other countries, but it goes on. And I'm not ashamed to say that I have also done it. One time I was in the States. I was in this lady's house. And the ceremony got very chaotic at night. When I tried to sing, everybody wanted to sing and drowned me out. They got up, they turned it into a party. They were singing, coming around the mountain and dancing. I just sat there, I quit singing. Ayahuasca come to me and told me, die. This is what you look for in life, to die. So I asked the question, if I die, will I come back? No answer. All she said was, die. This is what you seek in life. And I thought to myself, oh, why can this not happen to me when I'm in Peru at home? Then if I die and I don't come back, there won't be no lengthy investigation. There'll be a little investigation. Some gringo drank ayahuasca and died. Pretty much end of story. Nobody will go to prison for killing me or nothing. Nobody will go to jail. But I'm in the United States. Oh my God. If I die and I don't come back, I wouldn't wish the experience people would have to put up with afterwards on anyone. There'll be a very lengthy investigation. Somebody is liable to wind up going to prison for my death that they're not responsible for. So I struggled with it all night and did not die. I shortly after that went to another place where every time I was there I always had at least one super powerful experience. It was like this place was a point of power for me on the earth. We drank, there were several people's wives who didn't drink, who helped assist in the ceremony for people needed help to the bathrooms and back, whatever. I sang four or five Icaros, I stood up, we were on a deck, and I said, oh my God. I couldn't find the stairways to go off and use the bathroom. So I asked that somebody please help me. So somebody's wife came and helped me find the stairways and I went about 10 meters, I pulled my pants down to use the bathroom and I fall on the ground dead. The next thing, nothing psychedelic, nothing hallucinogenic. I look at the deck, everybody's sitting there, just as clear as right now, as clear as everyday life. I look on the ground, there's my body, shit and puke. Here I am. really startled me. No. All my years of experimenting with drugs, plants, now I've done it. I'm dead. I've killed myself. I looked at my side. Many of my dead friends were at my side. Just like I remembered them. To my right was Don Augustine, standing with his arms crossed. 
I looked at my friends. I asked them telepathically, what are you doing here? You people have been dead for a long time. They looked at me and they said, yes, Ron. So are you. No, no, no. Oh, well. I guess I have nothing left to worry about. If I'm dead, what is there to worry about? Then Don obviously starts communicating with me telepathically. Sing, Ron. Sing. All right, Don obviously. How am I going to sing? I'm dead. Sing, Ron. Then at that time, I was in a struggle with my teacher, Don Jose Cordera, over my land. And I thought, where's he? He's also my teacher. And in that moment, he showed up. He reached in his pocket and he threw something at my side and he left. And I go, oh well, the important thing is that he showed up. Then Don Augustine started holding these words in his hand, but I wasn't able to make them out. Then, this fog came in. Smoke, more like a fog. And many indigenous healers came with their kashimbos, their pipes. Very slowly they come to my side. They started blowing smoke on my body. Poof, I went back into my body. Uh, took my hands. Uh, 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 every bone in my body ached. I really think rigor mortis was setting in. This was in hot summertime. Never in my life have I experienced cold like I did that night. I was so cold. And being raised in the Midwest, I know cold. I know the cold to 20 degree, 22 degrees below Fahrenheit. That's freaking cold. This cold was much more intense. I crawled about 10 feet. Somebody's wife came over and said, Ron, are you all right? So cold. Could you bring me a jacket or a blanket, please? She brought a blanket out and covered me up. I laid on the ground for a while. I crawled to the house. I wanted to go to bed. I knew I had people I needed to work with, but I wanted to go to bed. I crawled upstairs. I couldn't make it to my bedroom. There was like a little visiting room between the bedrooms with a skylight. And the, the skylight was open. I'm laying on my back and the next thing I was like in the Mayan spaceman position from the sarcophagus, guess where the guy's laying, mm. like he's in a spaceship and I'm like working these little gadgets and I start singing in other languages that I had no idea where they came from and I started feeling my body filling up with a new energy and I went downstairs and worked with people very strong, very powerful. 